Hello everyone, Matt Ord here with the Healthcare Best Practice Group giving a 2022 year-end review uh, for healthcare improvement. I'm standing uh, in, uh, in front of the mighty Wisconsin River and uh, Wisconsin, as I'm sure you probably know, we're not known for our warm climate, but we are, are known for great people and a beautiful scenery and it's a great place to live and we'd like to keep it that way. A lot of what this is about is this win-lose situation for buyer and seller of healthcare and we'd like to make it a win-win. So a few points, uh, if you hang with me till the end here, we've got, uh, I've got some it's so cold jokes uh, for you that uh, my kids think I'm really funny so we'll get to share some of those with you at the end. So uh, four or five points and uh, run through them here fairly quickly and then share the jokes. So the first, uh, the big, maybe big point of sharing in 22 is the uh, CAA, also known as the Consolidated Appropriations Act. What this act did, it activated right at the end of 21, and there's several pieces to it, but one big piece is broker transparency. So in health plan overall transparency. So employers who haven't really had visibility or awareness or how much they're spending on fixed cost and how much they're spending with their partners and when their partners make money and when they don't, if there's misaligned incentives and things like that, your partner should never do well when you're not doing well. So if your plan's falling apart, as most have for the last few decades, your partner should be suffering as well. And if you do well, they can share in some of that good stuff too, but it's been misaligned. <clears throat> so we see uh, a requirement of, of brokers. This is a requirement. You don't have to request it even to share a full description of their services and all indirect and direct compensation related to your plan. If they haven't sent this yet, then I do have a form I can send you. You can send me a note at matt at selffundhealth.com. No dots or anything or dashes. And I'm glad to send you that template that you can request that from your broker. Many have done that and have actually been pretty surprised. So we just want to keep everybody honest. And again, we want win-win situations, not win-lose as we've experienced. So second point, the RAND study, uh, what they call round four of the RAND study showed that Wisconsin, now there's different ways to slice and dice this, but in my review and others have commented as well, John Trinas, uh, we look to be about the fourth worst state. So, and that's considering relative data uh, that's related to ASC, so surgery, uh, outpatient surgery, and then overall hospital inpatient and outpatient uh, care. Uh, so if anyone wants a copy of that, I'm glad to send that to you as well. Again, the same email. So, um, but this, one of the things of this study is it continues to dispel the, uh, the claim that, that commercial prices are high. That's what it's the, the employer side, about 58% of healthcare in America is purchased by employers. The rest is government, that that's somehow higher because specifically related to, uh, Medicare being low. And what we, they find continually year after year is there's no correlation with that. But that's simply not true. That actually the higher prices have to do with a couple things. The hospital's ability to negotiate and market power as in kind of monopoly power. And that's really what, what they're finding more is correlated with that. So, uh, and then a large variation in prices for the same services. Huge variation even within hospitals sometimes. So an interesting study that's uh, got some good graphs. Let me know if you want to see that if you haven't already. Uh, overall, we're seeing the cost, number three, cost trends are increasing. And um, I'm trying to read my notes here, they're blowing in the wind. Uh, so we're seeing, you know, when we see renewals for the fully insured side or just the increases, uh, 10 to, this year, 10 to 70%. Uh, so one that was 70, I've seen 100 in the past. And then sometimes even over a two year span, you'll say, wow, that's over 40 or that's over 50. Nothing else, we've seen inflation, but nothing else increases at that rate, that's an unsustainable rate. Number four, the healthcare best practice group, group updates. Uh, I'll see if my mouth isn't freezing here as I talk. Um, the updates, we have did six of them this year, so the employer events, we call them. We plan on doing more next year. We haven't done Madison yet, so we'd like to catch that. We're also looking at Wausau probably in the first quarter, and, we'll, and then we'll have new messages and new speakers and keep that fresh. But 80% uh, of this is probably education and 20% networking. So we've got to educate before we can really dig in, and, and that's been the gap is that employers have delegated this uh, completely to their brokers, and the brokers who are getting paid in different ways. And we see some brokers coming around. So we're on their side, but they're gonna have to uh, change the way they do things for us to fix this in Wisconsin. 
Um, so we've had events, uh, you may have been to a few, but we started in Stevens Point, then we went Waukesha, then we went Menasha, then we went Marshfield, uh, then we went Eau Claire, and then we finished the year in Green Bay. So, um, so lots of things going on with that. The, the Healthcare Best Practice Group is approaching 250 employers now, and actually over 800 people names on the list. And uh, most of those are in Wisconsin. We have some covered nationally, but it's, it's uh, most of those are from Wisconsin. So we're looking to gain momentum, and I think we are. We're seeing a lot of movement in this movement, and. Uh, and a lot of employers beginning to become educated and take action. And so that there, that there actually are things that employers can do, right, to increase quality and control and even lower costs. So now probably what you've all been waiting for, my, my great humor. But uh, so I've got some it's so cold jokes for you in Wisconsin. And I think I've got six of them. So here we go. It's so cold that Starbucks is serving coffee on a stick. So there's the first one. Um, the second one, it's so cold, I pried my mail open and it shattered. Number three, it's so cold, Elsa's not even bothered by it. So if you have kids, if we have foster kids, and I've only seen the Let It Go movie maybe 8,000 times, give or take. But uh, you get to know that, that uh, Elsa has a comment in there that she's not even bothered by the cold. Number four, opto it's so cold, optometrists are giving away ice scrapers which e e with each new pair of glasses. And number five, it's so cold, politicians have their hands in their own pockets. That's a good one. And the last one, it's so cold, grandpa's teeth are chattering and they're still in the glass. So there's some fun humor for you. I uh, just want to take this moment as well to wish everyone a, a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, please keep in touch. I'm very grateful that everyone's getting in this game and thankful for the work you're doing and all the... All the, all the folks on this side, whether we agree on everything or not, all the folks on this side that are doing things to improve Wisconsin healthcare and make our healthcare sustainable for the future. So thank you.